Hello and welcome to the Untranslatable Podcast. We are here recording episode 145. And today, this will be a language extravaganza because we will be talking about all sorts of things related to language. We'll have some additional untranslatables. Also, we'll be discussing Urban Dictionary and a very fascinating new project with our special guest. So hang on tight and we'll be introducing her very soon. And today's episode is just for you if you haven't been getting enough language knowledge from our podcast recently because we've been focusing more on travel and some other things. So stay tuned. There's going to be a lot of awesome language going on today. We're very excited uh, to have a true polyglot on. Jared and I like to tout ourselves as polyglots, but if we face the hard truth, we're not really polyglots. We just want to be polyglots. But today we have a professional in the flesh, so we're very excited. But before we get to that, my fake polyglot buddy, Jared. What's going on, Jared? <laughs> You're ruining our secrets, Chad. No, uh, <laughs> I like uh, language extravaganza, but I prefer untranslatable palooza. Um, oh, that's way better. And that's, that's way I'm better. Go with. Welcome to the untranslatable palooza. <laughs> you can follow us Spread a little love. on uh, Instagram, untranslatable podcast, Twitter, untranslatable one, the number one. Uh, you can email us, untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. And obviously... Now, obviously, five-star reviews. And for all the Russian speakers and or polyglots out there, Pajalsta. please, five-star reviews on iTunes and Stitcher. That's right. Well, Jared, I think our listeners are very excited. So I think without further ado, it's time to introduce our uh, awesome new guest for today. Her name is Amarens, and she is a polyglot. She speaks Dutch, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. We definitely could have used her help a few episodes ago when we had a few Portuguese phrases on. And uh, Amarens holds a degree in linguistics from the university. I believe it's pronounced Leiden. I could be wrong, but she can correct me in a moment. Uh, and today we'll be talking about a lot of stuff, but uh, especially uh, she is working on a new project of uh, compiling an urban dictionary of sorts in numerous different languages. So we're very excited to talk to her about that and have her on the episode and also gain some insight from her on uh, what it's like to be a polyglot. And I wouldn't mind nerding out a little bit about linguistics as well. <laughs> um, although I didn't study linguistics, I do have a master's degree in TESOL and German studies. So I've done some linguistic type things in grad school. So Amarens, thank you so much for taking the time to be on our podcast, and we really are excited to have you on today. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Uh, yeah, I think this, I think we might be setting some sort of record right now. First podcast recorded in three time zones, in the three most inconvenient time oh, zones. Oh yeah, that's that. yeah. true, very true. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's at all different parts of the day for all of us, um, mm -hmm. which kind of makes it exciting. Hey, I have a question. Um, did yeah. you also write a book called How to Fit a Life in a Year, The Exchange Student Guide? Yes. Yes, I did. Wow, you did your research, right? I did do my research. Yeah. Jared does his homework. Uh, no, um, that's good. What was that? What, what, what made you write this book? Okay, so uh, when I was um, 16, I did an exchange in Panama. And oh, cool. um, it was quite an intense experience, obviously, uh, being a 16 year old away from, from your parents and, uh, you know, in this country where nobody speaks English and you have to survive and everything. And um, and so I had this little blog because where I lived, I didn't have Internet. Um, and so to keep up with my family, I would write a little blog and, and kind of talk about um, what I was doing. But it quickly turned more into just my experience as an exchange student. And um, I later, like more exchange students started following me. And so I started writing more and that kind of just uh, turned into the book. Hmm. So That's awesome. What was this uh, exchange? Like what, what was the, what, is it through your school or something? Um, it wasn't through my school, but it was a high school exchange. So I lived with a host family and I was in um, a public school there and I just was just living my life there. Just oh, hanging wow. out. Yeah. 
Uh, Chad, you have you. Uh, that's similar to friends that you've made at your high school. You did the same thing, didn't you, at your school? Absolutely, absolutely. I actually used to get teased by a lot of my friends from my little farm town because I was that guy who befriended all of the exchange students in high school. Oh, yeah. um, and who knows? Who knows? Some of them maybe have read your book as well. Um, I'm also curious, though, as well, Amarens, how how did it work? The actual getting the book published and everything like that. Um, I self-published. So, um, I, yeah, it was a whole lot of work, obviously, to get the book, um, you know, ready. Uh, there's a lot mm-hmm. more work involved than you'd think. But, sure. but no, I ended up self-publishing because I already had the following uh, on social media and on my blog. And so I just have, like, I have an ebook, And then there's a website that does, like, print on demand. So if someone wants... A printed version they can buy it there and it'll just be like shipped to their house and they get a type of commission oh very cool oh and for hmm. our listeners out there uh could you possibly drop the link so if they are curious and want to check out this book oh, where shit. could they find okay, it actually. are you talking to me chat or no i'm talking i'm talking to Amadez. Oh. well maybe jared <laughs> has it too i mean i could put it on social media is what yeah. i was saying oh, okay i don't then, yeah, then I never don't mind never mind um, no worries no worries uh, but that's okay. Uh, I'll put it on our social media. Um, Thank you. So you run the Foreign Language Collective, yes. which is uh, on Instagram yeah. and uh, Facebook. Yeah. Chad fo- has been following the Foreign Language Collective on Facebook for a long time, and I he really, didn't even know it. Thank you, Chad. Yep. Um, so it's good to have a name to the face, <laughs> yeah, that's for yeah. sure. No, it's quite funny because it is... Um, I mean, as it happens with these meme pages, you know, they spread quite quickly. You get a lot of people liking mm-hmm. these pages. Same happened to my, my uh, other blog that was more like travel related. Um, mm-hmm. and so a lot of times I'll meet new people, international people that also love languages and traveling. Mm-hmm. And they actually like my pages. Like I can see them sharing my stuff and they don't know it's right. me. And I always feel like at that point it's too late for me to tell them like, it would just <laughs> seem like I'm showing off, you know? And so I just, like, let it happen. But, um, yeah. So I don't know about the Facebook, but I noticed, as, I, as you mentioned, I did do my research. <laughs> and I noticed that the Foreign Language Collective, your first post on Instagram, at least the first post I see, was June 12th, 2018. Yet here it is, October, or excuse me, November 6th or 7th for you guys, 2019, if I'm not mistaken, you have over 31,000 followers. Yes, that is correct. How, how does that happen? And hold on so I can take notes. Real yeah. Quick. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, yeah, really. <laughs> we need some help, that's for well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, so obviously I got an initial boost because my Facebook is a lot bigger than that, actually. Um, I've been mm-hmm. running that ah, for like okay. a long time. So I got like a small initial boost from Instagram, but I want to say like maybe less than a thousand followers, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, it was really hard to get people from one to the other. But I think, um, if you want any tips, just a consistency, uh, I post with a scheduler and I just, I just put everything in there and then it will post like two a day. Uh, and that really like plays well with the Instagram algorithm and, um, yeah, I think that's just a consistency and just keep doing it. For sure. So it is um, mostly memes. Is it like, um, was it, is it purposeful that you don't, that you like, um, like you mentioned that, you know, your friends don't even recognize that they're sharing your post or something like that. Is it purposeful that you leave your face out of it for the most part? Like, do you, is there, um, a, is, do you enjoy the a- anonymity? No, I think it's just easier, you know, because I, I don't have to put on pants to post memes, you know? Mm. So yes. it's, it's a that's very... A uh, that's a quote right there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's, well, no, but that's, it's just convenience, basically. And um, a little bit like at this point, a lot of times I wouldn't even know what what to say if I actually had to be in front of people. Although I do, like, I write on my blog, so that's kind of an outlet. But again, you don't mm-hmm. have to put on pants or write a blog post. 
Um, that's true. Also or true. Or record a podcast, actually, which maybe that's a maybe that's a question <laughs> as well. Although I have been asking Chad to please put clothes on for the longest time. <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah. yeah, it is a little it's disturbing, been difficult. Chad, that you're not wearing any clothes right now. <laughs> um, so you grew up in the Netherlands? Yes. Okay. And um, I assume it was this this initial trip to uh what is it panama I, yeah, that, panama, where you yeah. went panama yeah that got you mm-hmm. interested in 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 language to this extent um i mean i guess i was interested before because i wanted to go to panama um so i was no. always well, actually when i was little i was obsessed with learning english like i used to think that everyone who spoke because speaking dutch was uh obviously so came so easy to me as a native speaker and so when i saw people sure. speaking foreign languages i used to think that they were just like that they also spoke dutch but that they were just choosing to speak english because they were so cool and they just like were like oh we're gonna do something <laughs> oh interesting okay yeah and so i was obsessed with being a part of that exclusive group of people that was just so much cooler than everyone else um hmm. And, um, and yeah, so I, I always wanted to learn English and then later I became interested in Spanish and that morphed into Portuguese as well. Um, but I think it was always kind of there. It's interesting that, uh, English was considered like the cool language to learn. I mean, I guess I, that kind of makes sense, but at least in my head, I mean, you're from the Netherlands. In my head, when I think of the Netherlands, I think, oh, everyone there already speaks perfect English. Right. Yeah. It's like, when you're where, what's the... five, you know, like that. That's a good point. That's, That's a good true. Point. That's that happens true. When, um, it's a good point. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting because I can really, I have like two parts of my life where there's one before I knew English and one after. And a lot of times. And do you I'm remember like, that clearly? Kind of, yeah, because I, I'll like listen to a song from like back in the day and I'll be mm-hmm. like, oh, that's right. When I, when this came out, I had no clue what this was about. And I just c- kind of imagined what it would be about or I would catch words. And now that I do speak English, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Like, that's mm. not what I meant right. at all. But, um, yeah, so I, I kind of do have that. Um, but it's just for certain things, you know, like I'll remember the moment it came out and I'll remember if I understood it or not. Not to, not to put you on the spot, but do you have any examples? Of songs? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. That came out maybe during your childhood when you just started learning English? Gangster's Paradise? Oh, that's a good one. A that's choice. a good one. Yeah. Okay. Which it's actually came out, I think, like, the <laughs> d- not, maybe not the date, no, like, I think it was number one when I was born, but obviously it, like, lingered on and was, like, a, a big hit that would come back. Um, and that definitely right. has, like, from what I imagined from the music, it was so different from what the lyrics say. <laughs> yeah that makes sense <laughs> I, I i'm trying to imagine like if i didn't not that i can even do this but like if i didn't know what the words were what i would think was happening in that song is it like a happier or like a do you think it's happier uh, than it actually is i think it's just different like in, it, i did always imagine it to be quite like dramatic and stuff but i just i mm. just the specific subject obviously wasn't something I imagined at like seven years old, you know? Right. I am looking at the lyrics and it is, even (laughs) I'm like, oh my gosh. Or you and your homies might be lined in chalk. I really hate to trip, but I got a lock. As I grow, I see myself (laughs) in the pistol smoke. Fool. Yep. I'm the kind of G the home, the little homies want to be like. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. All right. I guess I get that. That makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, There's like, there's a radio show in the Netherlands where they sometimes they'll take like famous songs and they will rewrite the lyrics to kind of mean the same thing, but just in a, well, first of all in Dutch and then second of all in in kind of a general uh, gist. And then they put like very dramatic piano music under it. And then you have to guess what song it is. 
and it is one of the best wow. things ever. Yeah, because is that like a game awesome. show? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's like a segment oh. on a show on a radio show they do. And, oh um, right, oh that's great. It's so that is good. super awesome. Yeah, it's really good. Hmm. Hmm. I hope they uh, pay whoever does that segment really well, though, because that has to be an incredibly diff- difficult job. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. But they did. So they did Gangster's Paradise once. And I remember, like, listening to it. And I was like, wow, that's a that's an incredible story. And then they played the song. And I was like, shit, I never connected the two because it's like <laughs> such a different vibe for me. But a great song. I love it. But. Yeah. So, um, what, so you speak Spanish and Portuguese. What do you do to keep it up? Uh, I speak it. <laughs> no, I, that's, I, yeah. It's good. That's a good way to do it. But you don't mm-hmm. live in either of those places. No, is, so like, do you have, you have friends that speak Spanish and Portuguese? Yeah, I think, um, I don't know if I look for it per se, but it is something that, you know, when you meet new people and it is someone that happens to be from Mexico, you're like, oh, I speak Spanish. And they're like, oh, that's cool. And then you mm-hmm. kind of keep in touch because you mm-hmm. have this connection. Um, so, yeah, I think wherever I go, I you you come across people who speak that language and then you can practice. Do you find yourself having like like um friends you can recall from like a whole bunch of different cities and countries you're like oh i know someone there oh i know someone there too yeah yeah it's like every Hmm. place basically or every country else no i won't say every place is either i've been there i know someone there um or i want to go there or two of the three or all of the three you know like that's yeah so, Amorans, how many countries have you visited? Um, I don't. I don't really like to count. Um, okay. But I, I like twenty something, maybe. That's pretty good. Yeah, That's but I mean, good. I live in Europe, so you get like. You get right. 10 for free at birth that's, here, you know? <laughs> that, That's true. That is true. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, what are what are some of the next languages you think you want to tackle? Oh, there's there's a there's a bunch. Um, like if you're interested in languages, there's always a bunch that are like, oh, I'd love to learn a little bit of this. Um, but I very really, true. Yeah, tell me I about it. I want to do Swedish for some reason. Oh, cool. Huh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I watch a lot of Swedish crime shows, like murder stuff. And of course. I just want to. <laughs> the only Swedish I know so far is like. It wasn't me. Uh, I was home alone on a Wednesday. Like, it's all murder related or like <laughs> denying murders or, you know. Uh, so well, I if you ever get learn. caught up in a murder in Sweden, you'd be good to go. <laughs> oh, I'd be so good to go. I would be able to deny and everything. It'd be great. But um... <laughs> uh, it's interesting that your mind immediately went to denying the murder. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't solve it, but I can deny and lie very (laughs) effectively in Swedish. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, But yeah, no, I'd like to expand on that knowledge and like learn some maybe useful phrases. Um, And um, what else? I'd really like to learn Afrikaans because it's like related to Mm. Dutch, but Mm -hmm. so different as well, which makes it even the way you said it was so nice. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Uh, even the way you said it was like, oh, is that how you're supposed to say it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we say Afrikaans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot smoother when you uh, say I it, mean, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah, it's my Dutch accent, but I think it's fairly accurate, which makes it great. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, I mean, there, it's, I, would assume I, so. I believe they are uh, very similar. Yeah, they are. Mm-hmm. And um, they kind of sound, because I guess the people who went to South Africa were from like uh, North Holland. And so they kind of have that specific accent. And it's really funny to hear those people speak kind of like Dutch, but not really. And yeah, it's, it's very interesting. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Amarens, if you want to brush up or learn more Afrikaans, I've got quite a few South African friends here in China, <laughs> believe it or not. I, yes, I uh, heard that so f- on your podcast, actually. It was mm-hmm, quite interesting mm-hmm. that you would have so many South Africans there. Yeah, it's it is really fascinating. I think I think some of it has to do with the fact that 
Um, they, they are sought after um, as English teachers here. And I think a lot of them too are, are very curious about traveling and checking out new countries. I mean, yeah. I think most of our listeners are like that anyways, yeah. just due to the nature of our podcast. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool though. Uh, it's always fun to meet international people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do you, um, so when you are, you, are you, are you a very social person when you travel? You, you like to, are you good at going out and finding new people to interact with? I'm asking this because I'm terrible at it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I think I've gotten better at it. Um, cause I, like in the Netherlands, um, I, when I was a teenager, I was incredibly shy. Like for the first mm. year of high school, I don't think I spoke like at all, you know, like everyone just thought I was like that weird, quiet chick. Um, mm -hmm. But then I think if you like maybe the more you travel, the more you realize you have to. Like, I don't know. If for Absolutely. Me, for me, Panama mm -hmm. was that experience of being like, shit, I'm here alone. And if I don't do anything, I'm not going to have any friends. So mm -hmm. you kind of. And for some reason, I find it easier abroad because you immediately have that um, topic of conversation of like, where are you from? And I don't know, like, what yep. are you doing here? And it's like this immediate conversation. Icebreaker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would agree with you 100%. I think that going abroad, you kind of, I think there are a lot of moments you have that are kind of like aha moments where you realize like, oh, if this is on me and if I don't do this... Yeah my experience is going to really be terrible. Um, I, Jared and I were very lucky because so we studied abroad in Vienna, Austria okay. together. So we had each yeah. other, mm -hmm. which was good. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is that our advisor at our uh, college at the time didn't want Jared and I to live together because he thought we would only be speaking English. And when we got there, I think both of us were very motivated to improve our German. And we actually spoke only German together yeah. uh, okay. for the wow. most part, I would say. We showed you Perry. And so uh, it, it was good. <laughs> um, <laughs> very nice. He, he follows us on Instagram, I know. So you might have to <laughs> really? toss that clip on there for him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Either on Instagram or Facebook. Yeah. Oh, okay. Facebook. I think it's Facebook. Okay. But yeah. That's kind of impressive because I've always found that like once I start speaking a language to someone, and it doesn't matter what language mm -hmm. that is. I cannot switch to another language. Mm. It is like yeah. your. It friendship. is strange to switch. Yeah, it, it's kind of like your friendship exists in that certain <laughs> language, and then mm -hmm. like the jokes make sense and everything. And then if you switch the language, it's right. like, oh, I want to make this joke, but it just doesn't. It's just not right. And, yeah, um, I find it really hard, and I have a lot of friends who like want to switch because they want to practice, like whatever. It, it right, doesn't matter. sure. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not the one. This is not. <laughs> this is not going to be. Good. Oh wow! This is coming from the foreign language collective. Yes. <laughs> Can you please cut this? Not this me. Is not. <laughs> but yeah, no, I am that person. It com It completely makes sense, though. It's. It is really. Yeah, because now that I think about it, some of my German friends that I only speak German with when we communicate in English. If it's not via like a text message or something on WhatsApp, it, it feels weird. If it's like, am I talking to the same person here? What's yeah. going on? Yeah, mm -hmm. it feels. And I think it's because you like when you speak multiple languages, you get these like different personalities as well. And like mm -hmm. language Definitely. is so defining for, for humor and all that stuff. And it's it's I find it incredibly hard to switch languages with people. That makes sense. Can I ask you, Amarens, mm -hmm. how is your personality different in the different languages you speak? Like, is there one language where maybe you make a lot more jokes or maybe one language you're like more flirty or more like romantic? Yeah, um, actually, I can't believe you mentioned both of us, but um, I think in English, I'm funny. Like, I make more jokes for some reason or it, it just... Um, yeah, I don't know. And in Dutch, I'm a little, I'm very like, this like is also very connected to the language, but I'm more like down to earth. Mm. Um, okay. But still a lot of like jokes, like sarca sarcasm and stuff. And then I mm -hmm. think Spanish and Portuguese, I'm like less funny, but a little like maybe more, um, 
Yeah, like, I guess flirtier would maybe, but I don't know. Can't find the right word, but it, it's it's definitely okay. different. Like, it's definitely a different version of me. Okay. Do you find Interesting. that, Interesting. I feel like... S- with yourself? Do, well, I, well, first of all, I find that Spanish and Portuguese definitely lend themselves to being more romantic or flirty languages. Yeah. I feel like there's just so many endearing terms in Spanish um, and Portuguese that you can use for other people. And I think they also sound really nice. For me, um, to answer your question, Jared, for me, uh, obviously I crack the most jokes in English. I think it might just be because it's my native language right. and it's the easiest to crack jokes in. But I do think I have a decent sense of humor in German. Um, I think with That's German... Rare, but yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that's funny. Um, but I would say also that with German, um, well, bec- I'm just going to come out and say it because I've actually probably dated as many German girls as I have English speaking <laughs> women. I'm not a bad flirt in German. Um, although, once again, German doesn't lend itself to flirting <laughs> like I would say not. romance languages do. <laughs> not particularly, but. Um, And I think with German, too, because I'm trying to practice the language still, even though I've been studying it for 14 years now, um, it's a lot of it is also about um, I just enjoy it. So I think I think I ask more questions in German and I talk a lot more in English. Mm. That makes sense. That makes sense to me. But that's Mm -hmm. because I know you and Mm -hmm. I've been around you in both of those situations. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> um, well, I want to talk about your uh, new project that uh, that you that you're doing. Yes, it's um, you, as you call it, uh, an untranslatable urban dictionary sort of mix. Yeah, and I here at the Untranslatable Podcast think that's a great idea. <laughs> Amazing idea. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what, what made you think to do something like this? Um, well, um, they say the best way to create stuff is by like solving your own problems. Um, and mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I think I was like maybe looking for some slang or maybe this just happened over a period of time. Um, but um, I have a lot of friends in different countries, you know, so I'll have like American friends, English friends. And they all use different slang. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not sure about a a word they use, I obviously will Google it because I need to know what's what's happening. Um, Mm -hmm. And I found myself like, because a lot of times it'll be like an English word that just has different meanings per country. And I found it so hard to find the definition I was looking for because it kept coming up with like the most used definition that was like American, Mm. but not the like really obscure one that was the London south london slang or something like that um and i was like wouldn't it be great if there was just a website where you could like filter by language and by place and just like you know filter with additional information um and where people could also share that because if you go on untranslatable which i love uh, or on urban dictionary sorry um i love urban dictionary but a lot of pretty great it won't tell you who uses it so you'll find Mm -hmm. this term and it's like okay but who actually says this you know (laughs) or like or even or how often like is this just like a one-time thing that someone said or is this like a regular thing or you know there's Mm -hmm. a lot of information that's missing and um i guess as a linguistic student as well you want to be like categorical and you're like what are the questions i can ask about this um Mm -hmm. and absolutely kind of morphed into the idea of just creating an urban dictionary that's multilingual and that also adds additional information about uh, each piece of slang or every expression or whatever um, so that you can actually find what you're looking for but also so you can just browse it and find interesting things. I think that's a good idea. That's super awesome. The other issue with Urban Dictionary too, due to the fact that I think 
anybody can post on there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes people will post things to be like a troll or as like a joke or whatever. Yeah. And so then it's also like, okay, is this legit? Yeah. Is this really how it's used? Or yeah, yeah. did somebody have too many beers one night and <laughs> go on Urban Dictionary or with their friends and put their inside joke on Urban Dictionary? I think some of the best oh. Urban Dictionary definitions also came from someone having a few too many beers in one night, though. Uh, but I'll say this. <laughs> they, they do have, on Urban Dictionary at least, they do have the option to up or down thumb, uh, vote something. Yeah, that's so true. So I think that does naturally, I would assume, I don't know, I'm sure there's also a lot of people filtering out some of the real terrible stuff. But I, I'm, uh, I bet you that also helps sort of bring the best definitions to the front. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a, like a natural uh, type of filtering. Natural right. Natural mm-hmm. selection or something. Mm-hmm. Right, Like, like the right. Darwin of linguistics. But, um, Definitely. So do you have um, like a, are you like in the process of putting this together or do you have like a plan on how you want to put it together and make it a thing? Yes. So the plan is um, first I do, I am trying to raise some funds just to cover the initial cost. So I'll be doing a, a Kickstarter on the 15th of November. Um, also like one to raise funds, but two also just to get the word out there, you know, because a Kickstarter mm-hmm. is a really good way to gain some more um, publicity and for people to be like, oh, this is happening and we can be a part of this. Um, and then after that, uh, depending on how much money is raised as well, but I'm going to start um, with just creating it and then I'll have like small groups from social media test it and see what they like about it what they don't like about it and then we'll bring out the real version once it's ready um and then anyone can submit wow very cool we would love to test it out and give it a review once it's at that stage as well so please let us know we're happy to yeah to do that yeah yeah, especially yeah. Chad. He and hates uh, doing extra work. So anything that will make it easier for him <laughs> to find untranslatables quicker will be perfect. Exactly. That is true. Yeah. The sad thing is I was thinking about that when, when we were talking about this. I was like, ooh, now I have one place I can go to find everything. <laughs> no, that's exactly it, yeah. When I wrote you a uh, message, I was like, that's going to be my pitch. I'm going to tell them they never have to do work again. Like they can just... Right. That's all it takes. Yeah. <laughs> right. But sadly for me being in China, I can't really access Instagram. So uh, thankfully, oh. Jared Jared was the one who and the uh, was in correspondence with you. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad someone is not in China. Uh, um, so we can... Let's let's do some untranslatables. Let's do it. How, let's how about it? it? Yeah. Um, we have a we have a little sound effect here called the untranslatable owl. Okay. It's not an owl, but it's a cuckoo clock nope. that in the very early days of the untranslatable podcast used to always interrupt our podcast recording because Chad had this cuckoo clock in the room he used to record okay. in. We started calling mm-hmm. that the untranslatable owl. All right. It's like um, the Duolingo owl, but. Oh, I didn't even think about that. But oh, less, but less scary. A... I'm su- surprised <laughs> Duolingo hasn't come after us. Yeah, yeah right. season assist. Um, so right. this is how this works. I guess I should explain real quick. What we do, I don't know if you've heard this before, is um, so we'll we'll try our best to say the phrase in the native language. Uh, we say try our best because we don't know most of these languages that we do. <laughs> yep. And then we'll yep. give the literal translation, and then uh, the other people get a chance to guess what that means all right so uh i mean i can go first for an example yeah uh absolutely go for it one is latvian here's also a great example of not knowing how to pronounce things (laughs) uh and it means his folks are all away from home is this like and amaren since you're the guest yeah feel free to go first and take your guess um his guests are all away from home? His folks. His folks His are folks. all away from home. His, I don't know. Is this like being homesick or something? No, I don't know. <laughs> no, that is a good guess. Chad, what would you guess? I feel like you already know I'm what gonna, this is. I think so. I, well, I think this is like the German word uh, uh, sturmfrei, which means storm free, which means you have a party because your parents are out of town. 
No, you took that very oh. literally. His folks are all the way from oh. home. No, it I means, did. I took that too literally. <laughs> um, means someone lost their marbles or they're kind of uh, crazy. Oh, that them. makes Ooh. sense. Okay, yeah. that mm-hmm. makes sense. His folks. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a yeah. nice way to put it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I have a couple German ones today. Uh, because since we have a legit polyglot on, I didn't want to make my, myself look like too big of an ass. So I have a couple German ones, I have a couple Czech ones, and I have a Chinese one. Okay. So, uh, and I figured, Amarens, you might be able to figure out these German ones, being an English speaker and a Dutch speaker. Honestly, you could probably learn German within like six or seven months based Actually, on okay. your I have to, uh, previous language disclosure. knowledge. I had German for like f- four years in high school. Um, okay. And I was terrible. So this is like one of the things people tell me when they hear I speak multiple languages is like, oh, you must be mm-hmm. so good at them. And um, and I nearly failed a year because I was so terrible at German and French. So okay. um, so I did study it, but I really wouldn't know much. So, yeah, go for it. Well, but before I go for it, I think that might just be due to the way the language was probably taught to you. Oh, yeah. It probably wasn't taught to you in a way that got you super engaged and excited. And I'm going to assume that it was a lot of grammar base. Am yeah. I right? Especially with okay. German. It's like, it's yep. terrible, you know? Yeah. But I feel like if you speak Dutch, I mean, I know Dutch grammar isn't the same as German grammar, but I, I would think, think that there would be some similarities there were... were you wouldn't have to focus solely on grammar, but German teachers are big grammar nerds. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but anyway, so the untranslatable is, we could talk about this for hours. <laughs> the untranslatable <laughs> is, das blaue vom Himmel versprechen. To prom- oh. The blue promise from the sky. I, um, is it weather related? It is not, no. Uh, that was going to be my guess too. Shit. Well, um, oh, I think I have another guess though. Oh, go for it. Does it mean like you, you could like, you're seeing it or like you're predicting the future or like you can see into the future? Nope. All right. Nope. Wow. Well, well here, how about this? If I, if I reword this one and if, so I gave you the literal wording, if I reword this to promise a blue sky, does that help you? is like to promise something you might not be able to promise. Jared, can you hit that uh, ham horn for our guest, oh, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, congratulatory ham that horn. Is, that is something I can relate to because in the Netherlands, you wouldn't be able to promise a blue sky, you know? Like in other countries, this <laughs> oh, wouldn't work. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> if the weather was good, this wouldn't work. But uh, yeah, I can relate to this. Okay. Now, Amarens, do you have any phrases in any of the languages you speak yes, that well, you'd like actually, us to? Um, I, I found a couple of Dutch ones because I realize you haven't had that many Dutch ones. And we Dutch haven't. has a lot of expressions. Like, I think our language cool. is maybe 80% expressions and idioms and stuff like that. Um, hmm. So, um, let's see. Um, one of them is Ben in the Kerk geboren, which means were you born in church? It's like a question you ask someone. Were you born in church? Were you born okay. in church? Can I take a stab at this, Jared? Please. I think I might know what it means. It. Please. Were you born in church? Is this is this I feel like this is just like are you really that gullible? Are you really that stupid? No. I was gonna say oh. <laughs> I was going to say, is it like, do you think you're better than me kind of thing? That's a, that's a good one, but no. <sighs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's see. So, Were you born in church? Getting so excited. Were you born in church? I'm trying to think if there's any other. Were you born in church? Hmm. Okay, like, no, I don't know. Or is it like, did you, what, did you say gullible, Chad? Is that what you said? I did say uh, okay. gullible, yeah. All right. I got no guesses, okay, though. Okay, so it... Uh, it means it's something you say to someone when they leave the door open. Oh, it's like, oh, that makes sense. We have an untranslatable in English like that. What's that? Uh, were you raised in a barn? Oh, oh that's true. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's that's true. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. That's mm-hmm. that's nice. Makes sense. Both of those buildings are kind of drafty. Yeah. Even if the door is shut, sometimes <laughs> yeah. there's a draft. Exactly, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Jared, and, what else um, do you got for us today? Um, oh, see, I got a, I have a Portuguese one, and I'm scared to say it. Ooh. But say I it want and she to... Can, and she can say it 
correctly. Okay. All right. Vuterad mu cavalinho da chuva. Vou tirar meu cavalinho da chuva. Sure. What do you, what is do can you translate that is to it, see what, if I actually What was the first word? The first two? Vou tirar. Yeah. I'm going to take the horse out of the rain. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take my little horse, yeah, uh, little horse away wait. from the rain. Yeah. Out of the rain. Yeah. Wow. Very good. I had to see, Chad, I remember I told you my soundboard's broken, so I don't have my congr- right. my good job. Uh, <laughs> sound oh, bummer. Bummer. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll take my little horse away from the rain. Well, um, that's a difficult, I've never heard this one, so. Uh, it's a little tricky. Yeah. Um, is it to... Um, I don't know, like, to, uh, like, to, is the horse like a valuable thing that you're taking away from a, a not so good situation or something? Mm, it's, no, no, <laughs> it's like, um, it's, I, it's hard to explain. I'll give like a clue. If someone, if, if, um, uh, if, if my mom were to ask me to clean my room, uh, or else I can't go to Chuck E. Cheese. I would say I'll take my little horse <laughs> away from the rain. So is this like you do something begrudgingly? Yeah, there you go, chat. Oh, all right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right. Mm-hmm. I like that one. I like that one. Take all right, well, this... Uh, also, I don't know why, but when you said that one, Jared, for some reason, I just heard Old Town Road in my head. I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take my little horse away from the rain. Anyways, maybe um, I could be right, on my, the fifteenth uh, remix of that song. The, and, <laughs> there we go. There we go. My next untranslatable is German again, mm-hmm. and it is feucht fröhlich, which means uh, wet happy. Wet happy. Hmm. Wet happy. Is it mm-hmm. like when like crying happy or is the Oh that's a great that's a guess. guess. That's a great guess, but it's not. Oh. I'll give both of you a clue. What something is wet that you can have that will make you happy? And no, that's not a sex joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want to go there, but um, that'll make you happy. <laughs> um not as uh, uh I don't what <laughs> <laughs> oh, is, it, is it alcohol related? That's what I was there thinking we go. too. There we oh, go. Okay. Yes, it is. is it, do we have to guess like a beer? I guess is that? N- no, oh, wait, it's just any any alcohol. any any alcohol. Any uh, alcohol okay, doesn't okay, matter. Okay. Oh. Wait, can you give me the English? What's the literal translation again? Wet happy or wet? wet I mean, happy. Here they say wet and happy, but I mean it's a compound word, so it would be wet happy. Right. Uh, okay. I mean, that kind of makes sense, but that's a sad state of a, uh, you know, we don't, that's very sad too. <laughs> well, I, so feuchtfröhlich is basically uh, a night where you're enjoying alcohol and having fun. Oh, okay. That's kind of nice, Abend. Yeah. I feel like that's how, like, I'd explain, like, if my grandma were to ask me, like, oh, how, how'd your night go? And really, I went to, like, a rager of some sort. I'd be like, oh, you know, oh. just had a couple drinks with my friends. It was... Feucht fröhlich. I forgot how to say it. <laughs> Feucht fröhlich. Uh-huh. Feucht fröhlich. Uh, do you have another untranslatable for us? Oh, sorry. Is it? Yeah, it's me, right? Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shit, sorry. I'm, I'm not... Um, okay. No, it's okay. It's two in the morning there. Yeah, no. Uh, so I have one that's called... Uh, this one might be like easier to guess, but it's called the Fer van je bed show. Which is the Far From Your ah. Bed show. Have you seen that one? We've heard, I've heard this one before. Okay. What is, it? A far, what is it again? The Far From Your Bed show. Oh, didn't I do this one yes. too? Oh, Chad's done this one oh, before. Oh, no, I did this I one. I remember I've asking heard... what is... I made a clip out of it on our Instagram. I remember asking oh, uh, what shoot. does Bed show mean? <laughs> and I don't remember what it means. <laughs> oh, no. 
<laughs> oh, this is so embarrassing. I don't remember what it means. Can could oh. you do you know what bed show means? Uh, no. Not no, you. Chad. I don't remember. Not you. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like do I know what bed show means? Yeah, like what is that? Like in in Dutch you mean or like Yeah, well what does that mean? Like it, like that's the translation is oh, no. far so from the a... translation is um it's no, bed show is not a thing. It is something that is happening. It's a show that's happening far away from your bed. Oh, okay. Also, maybe gives a clue as to what it was. Is that like in the middle of nowhere? No. Oh, I'm so mad. I don't remember this one. <laughs> then again, we've then again we're on episode 145, and we've done a lot of untranslatable. Yeah, so I guess no, I shouldn't beat myself up too much. Um, oh, darn it! Do you want me to say it? Yeah, sure, sure go for it. All right, so it's it's something that's, like, not of your concern, something that's, like, happening really far away, oh. and it doesn't really relate to you. Yeah, mm. which is okay. why it's, like, oh, it's, it's like... a show, but it's happening really far away from your bed, so you just don't care. Oh, oh that makes that's sense. That's not how I looked at it. I was looking at it as, like, hey, don't concern yourself with this bed show. This has nothing to do <laughs> no, with it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, like, the, the, it's, it's kind of tricky because it is, like, written all together, but it should be, like, Far from your bed, and then like a space, and then show. Uh, right. Okay, okay, okay. That's what it should because be. Because yeah. I'm assuming it's because Dutch grammar, you put. That's just where you would put the, the, the noun in that case, or is that a verb? It's the noun, right? The noun. Um, but no, I think this is kind of a weird one because I actually had to look up how to spell it because it mm. is like a. It's not really a natural way of saying things. Um, okay. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why anyone would talk about a show that's happening far away from your bed, but it's still like this Dutch thing that, I mean, I've used it. I, I heard it in the past week, which is why I wrote it down. Um, oh, nice. Jared, what, uh, you, what else you got for us? Chad, give us a, a Chinese one, please. Well, first, I want to give you a Czech one because I oh, haven't right. spoken I Czech in a long time. Yeah. My Czech it was already bad to begin with, but, but uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyways, <laughs> so this this uh, Czech one is strčit někoho do kapsy, which means uh, shoved you into their pocket. Does that mean? I'm going to take a quick guess. Does that mean someone's like adorable? Nope. Oh, Makes exactly sense, but what no. I wanted to say. Um, is it... Jared, I shoved you into my pocket. <laughs> you, like, owned me? You're, like, yeah. insulting me? Yeah. I be, I, oh. I, usually it's like you beat somebody in, like, a sport or a game or something. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, would, yeah. that would never happen at anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So do you want me to give a quick Chinese one as well, Jared? Uh, yeah, please. You okay. have to. Now that you're in China. So Chad used to live, uh, this is for, for Ahmadans. Chad used to live in Czech Republic as an English teacher for oh. 10 months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every episode, for the most part, he would bring at least one uh, Czech untranslatable. And now he's living in China for another 10 months teaching, uh, teaching what? How to teach English? Is that what you'd call yeah. it? Yeah, English teaching that's methodology. That's what, yeah. Mm hmm Okay, that's the fancy name for it. And now <laughs> he is uh, bringing a Chinese untranslatable every episode. Oh, so Yeah, I'm trying to learn Chinese. It's very difficult. Uh, the tones are super tricky. Oh, yeah. Uh, half the time I probably say the wrong word, and I'm probably going to mispronounce these anyways. <laughs> but here we go. So You're so is, negative, Chad. I know, well, I'm trying to be real here, Jared. <laughs> trying to be real. So these words, and also I was explaining to my students yesterday in class that when I'm trying to learn new Chinese words, you know, they have four tones in Chinese. I don't know if you know this, Amarens, and some of our listeners may not know this as well, but so they have a falling tone, a rising tone, a flat tone, and like one that's like up and down. And so when you read pinyin, which is like the phonetic writing system for Chinese, because there's characters, so you have no idea how to pronounce everything, they have the symbol. So they have like a little, kind of like a little accent mark going down. They have a little squiggly which looks kind of like a hot check actually in Czech. They have like a flat line on top and then they have a, a rising one as well. Um, and so I was telling my students when I speak Chinese, 
when I'm thinking and learning these new words, I have to do the do the like pinion with my hand <laughs> while I say it. Otherwise, I always <laughs> pronounce it wrong. So here we go. Anyways, the untranslatable today is um, erbai wu, which means 250. The number 250. 250. Uh-huh. Um. You didn't do the thing with your hand. I was like, yeah, I was thinking that too. I did. I did. It was under the table. It was under the table. (laughs) So I was like, he's learning Chinese, but he's also learning like Chinese sign language at the same time by like. Um, Two hundred and fifty. Yeah, we need some sort of context here. Okay. All right. So, well, there's a good story about this one. So let me read the story for both of you uh, just quickly. So. Uh, the meaning behind this, and this untranslatable uh, can be an insult, just to help you. So, uh, a king's dear friend was assassinated in the night, and he wished to find who the killer was. The king posted a widely publicized request uh, to hire, and this is where I don't make sense at all. Uh, this doesn't make sense at all, but the king posted a widely publicized request to hire an assassin to kill the already dead <laughs> friend in question. Soon after... Four men showed up to claim 250 coins each. Naturally, the men had outed themselves as the ones who already killed the king's friend as they themselves were given the cash and then killed. Is that so? 250 is like, is that like a. It's the money they made for. Yeah, I understand. I understand the story. I'm now I'm just trying to figure out what that means. Would that then mean that you're like, you're, um, it's like kind of used as bait or something so that you know that makes that makes a lot of sense amarens but that's not actually what it is it's like it's outing yourself bait. like uh telling on yourself so if, essentially. if you if you out yourself jared would you say that is a wise decision or an unwise decision uh probably unwise i've done a lot of crimes i think gangster's paradise <laughs> <laughs> was pretty clear well, on move it. to sweden and amarens can help you Learn oh, the Swedish true. phrases so yes. you won't be, you'll be acquitted of all your crimes, Exactly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'll be your lawyer. So, so this, this, you. <laughs> ooh, there we go. There we go. Add another thing to your CV. That's great. Um, um, but no, so this Swedish just means doing lawyer. something stupid or ill-advised. Okay. Is what that means. Okay. Mm-hmm. So how, I mean, would you be able to use it in a sentence? I don't know. This is maybe asking too much, but. My Chinese is definitely not good so, enough to use a sentence. But if I were to use it in English, um, I would be like, uh, you know, oh, yeah, we needed to record a podcast. And uh, Jared decided to skip work so we could record the podcast mm-hmm. because we all know what Jared's true priorities are. Mm-hmm. And so Jared wrote his boss that he was um, out of town to visit family. And then as Jared comes back to work, uh, his boss says, uh, so Jared, how is visiting your family? And Jared's like, what, what, what family? What are you talking about? And then the boss goes, 250. Oh. I'm going to cut this part out of the episode. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So it's like just calling someone on their bluff, essentially. Right. Or, or mentioning like, well, that was kind of stupid. Yeah. Right. Right, right, right. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, before we go, another, you used to have, uh, Amarlands, a blog, a blog called Nationality Unknown. Yes. Nationality Unknown. Have you, you just, uh, um, do you no longer can write through that blog anymore? No, it's kind of, um, it was offline for a while because I was too lazy to move the hosting. Um, I still kind of, because that, that's kind of the blog I started, um, for my exchange, right? Because right. at some point I was, I mean, I was in Panama and obviously it was a Dutch girl in Panama. Um, mm-hmm. And everyone in Panama was like, oh, you're super Dutch. And then when I came back to the Netherlands, everyone was like, oh, you're so like foreign now and you speak all these languages. Chad has that same right. problem in yeah. the US. I do, I do. I think it's a problem yeah. a lot of people have. You're speaking to my soul right now, Amarens, because I feel like the the weird thing is when I'm, Abroad, I feel super American, and then the moment I step foot back on American soil, I'm like, "Wow, I am not very American <laughs> yeah. anymore." Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, and 
Yeah, so that's kind of what, what Nationality Unknown was about. And I think there it grew a lot because there were so many people relating to that feeling, you know? Because even if you spend, like, a little time abroad, like, it doesn't make you Chinese, um, but somehow it does make you right. less American or, like, not just mm. American, but also a little international. Absolutely. And uh, and I still like I still feel very passionate about that, but it's I, I'm doing a lot of stuff, and I just don't have the time to really do something with that. But it it is mm-hmm. something um, that I think a lot of people can relate to, and I I think it's a yeah. I I looked I looked through it, and I was looking at all of the titles, like uh, the statistics of studying abroad. I really like that one. Mm-hmm. Eighteen signs that you're suffering from PTD, post travel depression. Mm. Like this is all stuff That's a that. Thing. Um, Chad and I definitely uh, relate to, and I think it's a, a lot of these topics resonated with me at least because I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of why Chad and I started doing this. You know, what we do here is for mm-hmm. you know some of the topics that you touched on. So I just thought it was a cool little project. I was uh, just interested in it. Yeah. Um, I have a few more questions for Amarens before we go. If that's all right, we don't want to keep you I, up too I, late. I no, no, yeah. go for it. Okay, great. So I and I always love to ask this question to anyone who speaks multiple languages and has done some extensive traveling. How do you think and the reason why I ask this question is because I think it really goes towards our mission as a podcast. Um, And so how has language learning and traveling changed you as a person? Oh, I don't even I know it's a big question. Yeah, that is a big question. Um, I mean, I don't I cannot think of myself as a person who speaks just one language you know like the person i am wouldn't exist if i only spoke dutch right so i I think that's like to me it has become like like the most crucial part of me in a way um and yeah and so traveling and learning languages is like uh it, it, it if you ask me how it changed me i think um you just you learn a lot from it that you wouldn't learn otherwise and i think it makes you grow up really fast and it makes you put things into perspective and it makes you more understanding also towards other people and um more appreciative maybe of your home country which mm-hmm. i don't think i was before but like now traveling even the obviously i like all the places i go to but it also makes me appreciate the netherlands um sure at the same time um yeah i think those are the the main ways that it has changed me that's great i i can't agree more uh i i always tell my students here in china because a lot of them haven't had the opportunities to do a lot of extensive traveling yet in their lives i think it's because they're obviously young and it depends on their parents' financial situation and also where they're allowed to go travel. But I always tell my students that you never really understand your home country until you leave it for a little while. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and there's so much that you take for granted at home um, that you don't take for granted after you travel uh, and you come back. Um, one, thing, one thing for me, at least, that um, I think I really... Uh, took for granted in the beginning when I was in the States before I went to Germany for the first time was just the fact that um, in America, not that you can't get this in Germany, um, but in America, I think there's so many different diverse things you can get in terms of food, in terms of people. Obviously, this depends heavily on where you live. And if you live in a city like Berlin, Germany, it's also no problem. But I was in some small towns in Germany and it just was very different to... uh, you know, I grew up near um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, which I think is a very diverse place. There's a lot of people from many different countries, a lot of really amazing restaurants and stuff. Um, and so, so yeah, it really does change your perspective on things back home. Oh, yeah. um, and I think it also makes you a bit critical, too, of certain things at home that you maybe wouldn't have been critical beforehand because you see how people do it differently in other countries. Yeah. No, for sure. It's... Uh... I mean, to me, Panama was like obviously completely eye-opening, and um, there are um, a lot of like one thing I love about the Netherlands now is like d- the directness and the honesty that the people mm-hmm. have. Like I always know exactly where I stand with everyone, whereas in Latin okay. America, 
um, people are really nice, but it's not all real. Um, ah, sounds like America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it makes, especially for me, because I'm like, I grew up in a country where, where everyone was direct to me. So if someone isn't, I don't know how to read their issues, you know? And so right. like, sure. sometimes I'll have issues with like English speaking friends. I'm like, I didn't even know there was an issue going on just because oh, you didn't yeah. tell me, you know, like, why wouldn't you just <laughs> tell me true. that there was an issue? Yeah. Wait, you can't read people's minds on our ends? Yeah. yeah <laughs> I did exactly. not know that I was feeling this way. It's like I'm already speaking your language. What, what do you want? You know, like, <laughs> right. I'm really trying no here. kidding. You can't read no minds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You already speak a bunch of languages. How have you not developed <laughs> yeah. the ability to read minds yet? I know. Yet? It's uh, yeah. the nerve. But um, yeah. But at the same time, like living in Latin America has like there's so much I learned from that experience, you know, mm -hmm. and, and just, um, just being the only like foreigner there, being the only white person there, like mm. getting it's all me these in China right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, it's, it's such a different experience and, uh, it really opens your mm -hmm. eyes in, in like the best way possible. And, uh, and I think everyone should have an experience like that, you know, like I think everyone should, experience being a foreigner and being a minority in whatever way like linguistically yeah. or ethnically or whatever and like see what that's like when not everyone is like you or speaks like you or looks like you True. or whatever uh i think that's really important and i think everyone should get the chance to experience that and then become a, a better person for it hopefully and going off of that what was it what was it like being a, a minority in in panama in Latin America? It was quite, um, I think Panama especially is, is, um, it's pretty interesting because it is very ethnically diverse, but at the same time, there's no okay. white people. Like the rainbow kind of mm. cuts off at like, like light brown. And then there's like mm. nothing. And so the, the, a lot of, for a lot of people, I was like the first white person they saw. So you get a lot of weird questions, um, just a lot. What of, kind of questions? Oh, uh, <laughs> well, there was one uh, one person who um, a lot of people were convinced that I was doing something to my skin. They were like, you cannot mm. be this white, you know. <laughs> like they just, You're like, all right, guys, this is starting to get a little offensive. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they were they were truly like in shock. They were they just didn't understand it. And so one person came uh -huh. to me with like the best intentions, I assume. But she was like, wouldn't you be happier if you were brown? Like if you would just <laughs> stop doing all that bleaching and just like be your natural mm. self. And I was like, do you not realize that this is actually what I look like? Wow. Right. They asked a friend of mine who had blue eyes. They asked her if she could cry with blue eyes. <laughs> oh, I like that. Which, um, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I wish I wish that was the case. It, you oh, cry I'm, flames or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, so oh, I man, mean, that's wild. A lot, of, um, a, a lot of people would be like, oh, my God, she's like did you did you come from tv do you work in tv because they just had only seen white people on tv mm -hmm. and so they were like oh, yeah. so you must be um any any like vaguely white person i was like <laughs> compared to i was like oh my god you oh, look so funny. much like this person and i'm like i don't look Liam absolutely Neeson. nothing like but even like <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, that's over. random. <laughs> but even like Jennifer Lopez, for example, who for them is like white, they were like, oh, you look like her. And I was like, no. Fascinating. <laughs> yeah. So, um, oh, that's too funny. That is always, too funny. Oh my gosh. I was lost. They always were like, <laughs> so there was actually, this was a pretty good like case study, but I, there was another girl um, on exchange in my school who was from the United States. But she was adopted from Vietnam and she was like kind of darker skinned, um, but mm -hmm. didn't speak Spanish that well. Like she spoke some, but but not that well. And I sp spoke Spanish quite well because I studied it before. And we were at the same school and she had to do all the homework, all the tests, all the exams. And then when they came to me, they were like, oh, no, it's too difficult for you. You don't have to do that. Oh, And oh, if wow. I would like walk in the school, they would always send someone out to help me. 
because they always assumed I was lost. So, so I, they would like come up to me and say, where are you going? And I was like, I'm just going to the bathroom. They're like, oh, it's over there. I like, yeah, I was already going that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then my friend she would use that so she would like text me she was like i have an exam and then i would just walk outside of her classroom and then they would send her out like mm. your friend is lost go help her <laughs> oh that's a good strategy yeah, and we'd go like to the library and just like eat cheerios or something like it was yeah it was ridiculous but that's awesome hmm. did it did it test your patience at all when you were in panama dealing with you know some of these inconveniences yeah yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the biggest struggle for me was the getting a taxi every day to get to go to school because they would always overcharge me because they were like, oh, she's white. So she's oh, uh, yeah. a foreigner. Rich. She has a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And so the, the cab ride must have been like three dollars and they would be like, it's twenty five dollars. And it's like, oh, that's terrible. Oh, no, bro. Like this is and I would even give them five. I was like, this is more than you should be getting. But let's just get it over mm-hmm. with. But to mm-hmm. have that right. struggle every single day to have to prove. And I was like wearing a school uniform. Like I was obviously living there. I went to a public school. So it wasn't like I went to some like fancy school. Like I went to like a, a like public school in a pretty like dodgy part of town. And they were still like, oh, she must have a, really a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Um and to have that struggle every single day to have to prove yourself is like that was really challenging. I'll bet. Yeah, I can tell you that being a, at least where I live in, I live in Jinan, which is the capital of the Shandong province, which is below Beijing, it's south of Beijing. And downtown Jinan, there are a lot, well, not a lot, but there are some foreigners, you'll see them. But I live out in the university district, so I'm about a 40-minute cab ride outside of downtown, so I'm pretty far away. And, and oh, yeah, and I'll tell you what, I have never been stared at so many times in my life. Uh, the, the funny thing is all the children wear school uniforms here as well, and they'll be, like, either zooming by on their little mopeds or they'll be walking by and they all say hello. So that's kind of nice. At least I still like it. Yeah. Maybe in a few months I won't like <laughs> yeah. it. We'll see. Um, I've only been here now for a little over two months. But it is really, I mean, this has been the first time in my life where I've been so isolated in terms of, you know, I'm the only white person around here. Um, not a lot of people speak good English in China. Yeah. Um, and that's for numerous reasons. Actually, Jared, we should do an episode on that at some point because I've got some thoughts on that. So we should definitely do an episode on that. Um, but I will say this, even though the language barrier is huge, Chinese people have, at least for me, have been super friendly, super helpful, super nice. Oh, yeah. um, so it's, it's, really, it's really humbling sometimes when you're abroad. And, and I mentioned this to Jared before I had left for China or maybe right when I got here. I'm basically like have reverted back to being a, being a toddler because I can't do anything in the language. If I need to go get something done, like if it's very basic stuff like grocery shopping, like sure, it's fine. But like I had to, it took me over a month to get Wi-Fi here in China because there were a bunch of different steps I had to go through. I had to wait for my residency permit. I had to, I went to one branch to open my Wi-Fi and they were like, no, you have to go to this one because we won't process foreigners and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, um, all of that stuff, I need somebody who speaks the language to be with me because... Or I, I mean, I could defend, I could depend on like my translation apps that I have on my phone. But the problem is, is there've been a few cases where I've used the apps and then like my translations, they understand, but then they'll say something in Chinese and it makes no sense. (laughs) (laughs) Say it into the microphone. (laughs) Right. Right. So yeah. 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 But that's, that's, uh... that's really great. So, um, sorry. So to just to kind of recap what we've been talking about today, um, uh, Amarens, would you mind uh, letting our listeners out there know um, just a couple different things? Obviously, check out the Foreign Language Collective on Facebook and Instagram. I've been a fan for a long time, actually. I'm pretty sure um, I started following it, uh, at least on Facebook. I don't know how long the page has been up, but it's at least when I think when I was finishing grad school, I came across it. A friend shared something on there, and I thought it was hilarious, one of the memes. Um, so I've been following it for a while. It's great. Uh, when I had access to our untranslatable Facebook account, that's a whole other story. Uh, basically, we got hacked. Um, I was definitely sharing some stuff on there. 
I still actually don't have access, Jared, so I don't know what's going on. I hope you have <laughs> oh, access, you don't? but I still don't have access. Uh, so I if never you can really make me an at some point, uh, um, sure. Because then yeah. I'm happy to uh, try to share some stuff on there. If I can access Facebook, that's also <laughs> another hoop to jump through. But anyways, check out the Foreign Language Collective on Facebook and Instagram. It's awesome. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want a good laugh, also there's a lot of awesome language content on there too, uh, in meme form, which I think is the best way to get language uh, input other than uh, meme news, which Jared and I talk about. So check that out. Uh, <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for the uh, new kind of uh, international urban dictionary project. I don't know if you have a name yet for it, uh, Amarens, but um, yeah. yeah. So it, well, it's going to be called Untranslatable, which uh, is kind of how I came across you guys. Um, so you can so there, there's a website now where you can read more about the project, uh, or in the future when it's live, it'll be the same. So it's untranslatable.co, not .com, but .co. CO. Um, mm-hmm. And it's the same for Facebook and Instagram. So you go to facebook.com slash untranslatable.co uh, or Instagram uh, slash untranslatable.co and you can follow the uh, the progress. And there's also an email list if you want to get like <coughs> updates every uh, week on how the process is going and how far along. Uh, I am in creating the very platform. cool. Yeah, I'm checking it out right now, and it looks oh, awesome. The, the website it looks awesome. Four thousand five hundred and the website. Yeah, four thousand five hundred eighty-two plus people are following this project. Um, so people, go to untranslatable.co. Type in your email. Subscribe to this. This looks awesome. This is. Uh, I can. I think I can speak safely for Jared and I here both that this is such an amazing website. Amazing opportunity. Um, you guys definitely need to check this out. It's super awesome. And we do have listeners, at least at some point we were at over 20 different countries around the world. So hopefully some of our listeners out there can also add to your list as well um, and make this even better as well. Oh, yeah. Chad doesn't look at the stats, but we actually have way more than that now. But, uh... <laughs> do we really? Sweet. More, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very uh, cool. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm glad you found us, and maybe we can have you again on some time. Maybe yeah, once. Um... Whenever you whenever you want to have me, I'd be happy to to be a guest. I really enjoyed uh, being on your podcast, and thank you, Jared, for responding to my my Instagram message. And yeah, yes, thank you very much, Jared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, both of you are the real MVPs. That's for sure. In the words of <laughs> Kevin Durant. Yeah, we really appreciate it, Amarans. I think this was also a very uh, eye-opening episode for me and for Jared as well. You definitely dropped a lot of really good uh, gems regarding study abroad and learning languages. We really appreciate your insight and everything. It was really great. And I am just so excited about this website. Uh, it's so cool. Um, All right, it's Chad, just really the amazing. End the episode. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Anyways... If you want to check out uh, some of the amazing things that Amarens has been up to, follow the Foreign Language Collective on Facebook and Instagram. Check out untranslatable.co. Make sure you subscribe because uh, this is definitely going to be popping and it looks super amazing. Also, if you want to send us any future topic ideas or untranslatables, we would really appreciate it. You can reach us at untranslatablepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, check out our Instagram, Untranslatable Podcast, for all sorts of fun clips um, and some other stuff as well, documenting our travels and some of the places we've been. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. We didn't do a song of the pod today because we figured we had so much to talk about. Um, but if you are curious about international music or just want to get your groove on, check out our YouTube channel, Untranslatable Podcast, and uh, peek our uh, playlist, Songs of the Pod. And lastly, please give us some five-star reviews on iTunes and Stitcher and let us know how we can make this podcast better for you. So as we say here at the Untranslatable Podcast, yakuyame, muchas gracias, and shisha.